Okay, welcome back to lesson four, the need for cells to divide. Today we're going to look at the idea of cell replication as the means with which cells reproduce and why it's so important that cells uh, divide the way that they do. So why do cells divide? Well, the first is that they need to reproduce. And recall that cells are always made from other cells as a, one of the characteristics of a living thing. And the most important thing that we need to take into consideration here is that that offspring comes from the parent cells. So there's two types of reproduction that cells go through. The first is asexual reproduction, where there is one parent and it produces that identical cell. This is a process that produces body cells uh, within humans and other animals. And it does so by the process of mitosis. The second uh, option for cellular reproduction is sexual reproduction, where there are two parents and they produce genetically different offspring compared to the parents. And this is done via the process of meiosis, which you will learn in grade 11 biology with me when you take it next year. The second reason cells divide is to repair. Cells divide to repair and replace those damaged cells that are harmed. Anytime you get a cut, scrape, what have you on your skin, the cells go through mitosis and the cells around it that were not damaged divide to fill that gap, so to speak, to heal the quote unquote wound. The, second re or the third reason that cells divide is they go through cell division to grow. Uh, many of you are still growing. So as you grow, your cells divide and they uh, do not grow larger in size, but they in fact make more cells. So instead of just getting larger and larger and larger, they make more cells. And the reason why they re re rely on growing, um, on dividing, sorry, instead of growing is because the materials uh, like nutrients and water and all that type of stuff, they diffuse or they move across the cell wall and cell membranes and to remove waste to bring in nutrients into the cell and water into the cell. And it does so by this process of osmosis. And these processes take time and it's important for these chemicals to get into and the water to get into these cells and out of these cells in a timely manner. And the best way to do that is to have many, 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 many smaller cells instead of a few large cells. And when you think about the analogy that can help you understand this, uh, people in a stadium versus people in a classroom, which one will get out faster, the smaller classroom or the larger stadium? Uh, and obviously the smaller classroom because it is smaller, so you wanna have many smaller cells instead of just a few large cells. So there's an activity with which you can fill in. If you haven't done so already, you can do it uh, via the notes that are posted. I won't go over it now, um, but if you have questions about it, you know how to ask and find me. Um, and then there's just a couple of things that look at surface area and how they uh, surface area to volume ratio impacts this diffusion across a membrane. And in class, normally we would do uh, how potatoes take up specific stains like iodine. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to do that. So I want to talk a bit about the cell cycle um, as it is important for us to understand the process with which the cells divide because uh, they are not continuously dividing. There's a large period of time where they're in fact just doing normal jobs and functions uh, like your skin cells. Um, they protect you from UV radiation, infections and stuff like that. Uh, lung cells allow for oxygen and CO2 to move in and out. Stomach cells are absorbing nutrients, et cetera, right? So this period of time where they carry out normal functions is called interphase, and they spend about 90% of their life in interphase. The other 10%, however, is spent uh, doing the division components, that mitosis and cytokinesis, which allows for the cell to make a new one, split, and then as a result of that, have two cells from where there was once one. Uh, the cell uh, needs to grow in order to copy its DNA and it needs to take in nutrients. It needs to utilize that nutrients. And then once it does all of that stuff for that 90% of its cell cycle of interphase, then it can go through mitosis and carry out the uh, reproduction of that cell. So there are three main phases of interphase. The first is the G1 where the cell grows and carries out its specialized function. The second is the S phase or the synthesis copying of DNA needed to, to, so that the daughter cell can have the same DNA as the parent. Again, this is mitosis. There will be identical daughter and parent cells. G2 is the preparing for cell division and the checking of the DNA. This is where the DNA gets ready or the cell gets ready to divide and it makes sure that the DNA is copied properly. What about G0? If you remember up from up top here, there's a G0 phase here or G0, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what is that? What does that mean? Well, 
this phase here is for the uh, cell cycle to arrest. Cells leave that cycle for a period of time and then they never divide ever again. So neurons are a really good example of cells that never divide ever again. Once they go through that process of dividing and making up your brain, uh, in fact, they your neurons die as you get older. And so when you were born, you that was the time a newborn baby has way more neurons than an adult or even a young adult like you guys, uh, relatively speaking. Now, does that mean that their brains are more powerful? Well, no, because those neurons need to make connections before they can become functional. And in order for those connections to happen, uh, some neurons die off, other bonds that the neurons form become stronger. And that process takes, well, your entire life because you will continue to learn from now until the end of your days because that is how the human brain works. It can continually pruning and continually making new connections. And it's easier from the time of zero to about 23-ish. Uh, once you hit 23, it's a little bit downhill from there. But the whole point of this is, is that the cells make those connections. And as those neurons that aren't used, they die off. And you have less brain cells now than you um, had when you were a kid. And you have the most of your life currently. And you'll never have this much ever again, unfortunately. The last component I want to talk about here is the rate of cell division. Uh, some cells divide quite quickly, while others divide extremely slowly. Skin cells are one of those very quick dividing cells, whereas brain cells, they divide, well, never, unless you're looking at a, a brand spanking new child where just as they're um, about to come to term, the brain cells kind of fully flesh out and divide, and after they're born, they never divide ever again. So we're going to look at some of the stages of cell division. Uh, Specifically, when we're looking at mitosis, it's the division of DNA and the formation of two nuclei, including four phases, the PMAT, as I like to, to shorten it to, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This is the steps of mitosis and mitosis alone. There is a second stage of cellular division called cytokinesis, and this happens after mitosis where the cytoplasm and its contents, organelles, split up. And so my, the cell division is usually thought up of as just mitosis, uh, when in fact it is actually two separate stages, mitosis and the process of cytokinesis. Uh, it's important to note here that DNA has already been copied at the start of mitosis during that S phase, uh, and this is necessary because the cells need to have time to check for mistakes. The cells are very, very good at checking to see if any mistakes are made in the DNA, because if there were errors in the DNA, the, which are called mutations, uh, these mutations are always sought out for by the cell, and the cell will find these mistakes during those checkpoints, and they will try to fix the mistake. And if it's not possible to fix that mistake, then the cell will enter what's called apoptosis, which is uh, the cell basically kills itself in an attempt to prevent the, that damaged DNA from being replicated and passed on. When the cell cannot fix that mistake, this is what we call cancer. Uh, it's that uncontrolled cell division. And it's the idea that the mutated DNA has created this error, and this error is now propagated within future daughter cells, and it's uh, not good, for lack of a better word. Mutations are in a, in a gene responsible for checkpoints are usually what can lead to cancer causing. Uh, if the checkpoint is supposed to be triggered, but there's a mutation in that DNA that, that tells the cell to do the checkpoint, uh, then it can lead to cancers. So looking at DNA synthesis, which is the S phase, uh, it's important to note that our body cells have 46 chromosomes, one set of 23 from either of our parents, and a single chromosome versus a duplicated chromosome looks quite different. And then so the 46 total chromosomes uh, go through S phase, and then we end up with 46 duplicated chromosomes. All right, so that's it. There's the worksheet there. I'm not sure if you guys have this in your note, but you can go through that stuff. Uh, all of the notes should be filled in on Classroom, and if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Uh, I hope you're having a nice weekend, or you had a nice weekend. I hope you're all staying safe, and uh, I hope to see you in office hours soon.